Hi, my name is Thomas Rastatter. I'm an applications engineer with Lincoln Electric, and today we're going to be doing a submerged arc welding demonstration using our PowerWave AC DC 1000s. We'll be making three welds to demonstrate some productivity increases that you can expect to see when using our PowerWave AC DC 1000s. So, over to my right, we have our PowerWave power sources. These are 1000 amp machines, and they can weld in either DC or AC polarity and can weld in constant current or constant voltage. Also to my right, we have our Max of 10 controller, which is connected to our PowerWave power sources. And this is how you change your weld mode, your amperage, and your voltage. And we have our weld feed head connected to a side beam carriage. So zooming in on our Max of 10 controller, you can see that we're in mode 48, which is constant current DC positive polarity for four millimeter wire. And like I said before, even though we're in constant current mode right now, this machine can weld in constant voltage and AC polarity, which we'll be showing later. So right now we're set up for 650 amps of current and 28 volts. Our travel speed as shown here is 40.7 centimeters per minute, and we have a contact tip to work distance of 32 millimeters. So now we're getting ready to make our first weld. Like I said before, we're running in constant current DC positive voltage. We'll be running 650 amps, 28 volts, 32 millimeter contact tip to work distance, and 40.7 centimeters per minute travel speed. So to start this weld, I'm gonna pull this lever right here and dump some flux onto our plate to shield the arc when we're starting. And when I press this button over here, it's gonna weld, and when it gets to the end of the plate, I'm gonna stop it. So now that we're done making our first weld, I'm gonna use this vacuum to vacuum up all of the leftover flux, and I'll be using a slag hammer to chip off any of the slag that covered our weld. Now that the unused flux has been vacuumed up and the slag has been chipped off the weld, we're revealing the nice, smooth, and flat finish of the weld, and note how the toes are wet into the plate. So here we are over at our computer, and what we have pulled up is Command Center, which is a free proprietary program. Right now, we're showing the graphs from the weld that we are making right now. And you can see at the top, we have our current. In the middle, we have our voltage. And at the bottom, we have our wire feed speed. At the top, you can see that's very consistently reading at 650 amps. And in the middle, you can see that we're consistently running at 28 volts. And at the bottom, you can see there's some slight variation in wire feed speed, but we're running at about 1.42 meters per minute wire feed speed on average. So now we're getting ready to make our second weld. And this weld is going to be in a balanced AC square wave mode. So in order to switch to that, I'm gonna press memory button two on our Max of 10 controller. And that's gonna switch us into mode 49, constant current square wave for four millimeter wire. So we're gonna be running the same 650 amps, the same travel speed, but we're increasing our voltage from 28 to 30 volts. AC tends to run a little bit colder than DC positive, so increasing our voltage by two should help the bead wet into the plate a little bit more. Note that increasing our voltage by two volts, that's gonna be about a seven to 8% increase in heat input, but that's really not a huge issue for a lot of applications. So as you know, with AC current, Part of the time, you're in DC positive, which is where energy is flowing into the plate, increasing your penetration and helping the bead to wet in. Other time, the other part of the time, you're in DC negative, where the energy is flowing to the wire for increased melt-off efficiency. So since we're in a balanced square wave, we're spending equal amounts of time in DC positive and DC negative. So now that we're running in a constant current square wave mode, we're gonna be spending part of the time in DC negative, like I said before. So because of that, we're gonna be getting increased deposition rates from what we are getting with DC positive only. But note that since we're in part of the time in DC negative, we do get slightly lower penetration into the base material, but 
it's nothing significant and it shouldn't cause any lack of fusion defects for any application. So now, now we're getting ready to make the weld. I'm gonna pull the lever, dump some flux onto our plate to shield the arc, and I'm gonna start welding. So one thing you might have noticed while we were making that weld, it sounded different than the DC positive. And that's because it's constantly changing polarity since we're running it in AC mode. So now that we finished our weld, we're gonna go ahead, vacuum up all the unused flux and chip off the slag that's covering our weld. So revealing the weld, you can see it has almost the same appearance as our DC positive weld. Nice smooth flat face and wetting in the toes very well. One thing you might not be able to see is it's slightly more humped up in the middle, and that's due to the higher deposition rates that we we're getting due to the DC negative portion of our AC waveform. Now back over to command center. Looking at the charts for these welds, you can see the nice consistent graphs for our current, our voltage, and our wire feed speed. So comparing weld two back to weld one, you can see that we're at the same 650 amps, the two volt increase from 28 to 30 volts on our second weld, and a significant increase in wire feed speed. Wire feed speed increase was approximately 21% increase over our first weld to 1.72 meters per minute. And again, since we were in AC polarity, we had slightly lower penetration than DC positive, but we do have this higher wire feed speed. So now we're getting to ready to make our third and final weld for today. This weld is gonna be made using an unbalanced AC square wave. So in order to switch to that, I'm gonna to go to memory three on our Maxa 10 controller. So as you can see, we're in the same mode, mode 49. We're at the same current of 650 amps, same 30 volts as our last weld, and the same travel speed. But what is different is our balance. So right now, we're set at 25% balance and balance affects the amount of time spent in DC positive versus DC negative for your AC wave. So since we're at 25% balance, that means we're spending only 25% of the time in DC positive and 75% of the time in DC negative. Because of that, we're gonna see even higher deposition rates than what we saw with our second weld. So while we're using AC square wave, another option that we have is your DC offset. And although we're not using DC offset today in this demo, DC offset is a way to really dial in your deposition rates and your penetration of your weld. So DC offset, that affects the peaks of your DC positive and your DC negative portion of your square wave. So now we're gonna go over, we're gonna pull the lever like I did before, drop some flux onto our plate, and we're gonna hit this button and start welding. With this weld, you might have noticed that this also sounded different, and that's because of the higher percentage of time spent in DC negative. So now that we've finished our third weld, we're gonna vacuum up all the unused flux and chip off the slag covering the weld. Like the other welds before, this weld is also a smooth, flat appearance and wet into the toes, but it is slightly higher in the middle, which is caused by the higher deposition rates seen from the increased portion of time spent in DC negative on the square wave. So now we're back over to command center. You can see our third weld farthest on the right. You can see that we have the same 650 amps of current. You can see that we had the same 30 volts like we used 
in our second weld, and you can see our slightly higher wire feed speed at the very bottom. On this third weld, we had approximately 1.9 meters per minute of wire feed speed, which is a 12% increase over the 1.7 that we saw on our second weld, and a 34% increase in wire feed speed over our first weld. Again, note that there is slightly lower penetration when using these settings due to the increased time spent in DC negative, but there's still a very low risk for lack of fusion. So now we're gonna recap the three welds that we made during today's demo. The first weld we made was with DC positive polarity. The second weld we made was with a balanced AC square wave. And the third weld we made was with an unbalanced AC square wave. All changes made with just the push of a button, no changes in, with cables necessary. So one example of where you may use these three different settings would be in a multi-pass weld. You might want to use DC positive for your root pass to ensure maximum penetration maybe using an unbalanced square wave to achieve maximum deposition rates, and then finally going to the balanced square wave at the end to flatten out all of your welds and cap it off. For more information about our ACDC 1000 power sources and submerged arc welding, go to lincolnelectric.com.